Hello, my name is Tom Repass of Canyon Rim Honeybees in Hermosa, South Dakota. This next series of presentations are presentations that I have given at venues all across the United States. Some of you might have seen my very short, very basic queen bee uh, rearing video that is over 500,000 views as we speak. This series of presentations delves into how to actually raise and breed queen bees. This first presentation is the background of who I am, where I'm coming from, and then a general overview and outline of the presentations and topics that I will cover. I'm the fourth generation in my family to be a beekeeper and winemaker. I started keeping bees in 1981 when I was 13 years old. Beekeeping has become a passion that has been part of my life for as long as I can remember. But it basically, maybe I'm a little thicker in the middle, maybe a little bit more facial hair, but I'm the same kid out there playing with his beloved insects, honeybees, as I always have been. I'm a certified master beekeeper through the University of Montana, and my focus as a sideline beekeeper is queen bee breeding. Now, I'm not going to talk about instrumental insemination that's a bit beyond the scope of these presentations. I'm going to talk more about all the different aspects that you need to consider, whether you're raising a dozen queens or hundreds of queens or more per year. Although it's not pertinent to this presentation, I am an accomplished mead maker. I've won many uh, awards and competitions and throughout the United States. Making meat is my second passion after raising queen bees and if you have any interest in the art and science of making meat I do have another channel on YouTube the art and science of mead. Uh, I recommend you check it out and I have many presentations on there that I've given all over at various conferences across the United States. Okay enough about me let's talk about some of the topics that will be covered in this series of presentations. As I said, I've given these presentations uh, as an all-day symposium. Uh, they start from very basic through intermediate and then more advanced uh, topics. The first presentation is really basic queen bee information. Not so much about breeding or raising queens, but the basics of honeybee reproduction, uh, basics of queen evaluation and management. I know all of you are coming from different area levels of knowledge and experience. If you're an intermediate to advanced beekeeper, you probably know all, all of this within this presentation. If you are someone who's a beginner, then probably this is the best place to start. There's many methods of raising queens. Myself, I prefer the grafting method, but some of you might not need to learn that. Maybe you're only going to raise a handful of queens a year, or maybe you don't have good eyesight or you have a tremor. Uh, I'm going to talk about all those different methods. They can all work. I've tried most of them. I do prefer grafting queens uh, for raising queens. It's not as hard as you think. It is frustrating and challenging when you're first trying to learn how to do it. It's kind of like riding a bicycle. It's, it's kind of hard when you first learn, but then once you know how, then it it's actually seems quite easy. But raising queens and breeding queens is much more than simply producing queen cells. You have to have somewhere to put them so that the virgin queens can emerge, go on their mating flights, begin laying eggs. You need to think about other aspects too, such as your drones, the neglected, frequently neglected aspect of uh, honeybee breeding is the other half of your genetics, which is your drones. And then sometimes we have issues with rearing queens. These are not really written about that much, uh, but you know when something goes wrong, maybe your queen cells are rejected, uh, you have poor acceptance rates. These are things that you really need to figure out. You know what was the problem so that you can prevent it from happening again. And then finally, rather than just producing queens. Uh, t talking more about how to uh, b design your breeding program. Uh, this is really helpful even if you're raising queens just for your own use so you can select for the things that might be important to you. For example, I live up in the far north and it's important that my bees uh, can survive our winters. Uh, I also like gentle honeybees. 
uh, mite tolerance and all of these other things. So we'll talk about how to design a breeding program. And then my last presentation is talking about queen quality. Why bother raising queens if you're not focusing on raising the best queens you can? This is based off of an article that was published a few years back uh, in the American uh, Beekeeping Journal. To summarize, if you really think about a successful queen bee breeding program, it, it, there are really three aspects, three components that you need to really consider. First is the management and care of the colonies themselves that you're going to be used as uh, a source for your breeding stock and, and also for your cell builders. Uh, how to assess your queens, when to requeen. Then the queen bee production itself, whether you're using grafting or non-grafting. How do you use uh, cell builders? How, how do you get those queens mated? And the last component, which is often forgot about, is actually the breeding itself. Not just producing queens, but choosing your breeding stock, selecting it, keeping records, ensuring queen bee quality. And essentially, the secrets to success involve all three of these components. Well, with that, that's the end of my very brief introductory presentation. I hope that you find this series of presentations useful and helpful as you try to improve your queen bee uh, production and breeding program. Thank you so much for watching these videos.